Greetings, human. Welcome to another episode of Miss Erica's Crazy Costume Catastrophe. This week, Miss Erica is dressed like a cyborg. Resistance is futile, so we might as well get started. Because God's word is so great that you want to cling on to it, this week be sure to read Acts 18 together as a family. You can also find fun, creative ways to explore Acts 18 together as a family in your parent email, so be sure to check that out. First, let's explore where we're at in our Big Bible Timeline. For the last few weeks, we've been looking at letters that Paul wrote near the end of his life, but now we're jumping back in to Paul's second missionary journey. We learned a few weeks ago when we were exploring Romans that there was a couple living in Rome named Priscilla and Aquila that Paul is very good friends with, and he greets them at the end of his letter to the church in Rome. But this week, we're actually gonna explore when did Paul meet this couple? How did he meet them? And what happened after he became their friends? So let's explore that today. Let's check out where we're at on a map. Acts 18 actually mentions lots of different places. First, it talks about Priscilla and Aquila coming from Rome, and then they're living in Corinth, and then they actually move on to Ephesus. I got my friends, Eliza, Abigail, Naomi, and Moses to read to us from Acts 18. They made a cool video acting out parts of it too, so we can see what's going on. Take it away, guys. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila a native of Pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Hi, my name is Paul. Hi, I'm Aquila, and I'm Priscilla. Because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Oh, all Jews must leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. Nice tent poles, Aquila. Thank you, Paul. Every Sabbath, he reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. Jesus loves you. Thanks, guys. We learned before that Emperor Claudius kicked all the Jews out of Rome for five years. Aquila was a Jew. And so him and his wife, Priscilla, had to leave Rome. They end up in Corinth. Think about that. Imagine if one day you got kicked out of your city just because of your ethnicity. You would have to leave your school, your job, your friends, your home. You would become a refugee. That's what happened to Priscilla and Aquila. They become refugees fleeing Rome trying to find a safe place to live, and they end up in Corinth. That was probably so painful and scary for Priscilla and Aquila. So when they get to Rome, their job is that they make tents. So they start making tents in Corinth. One day, Paul comes through. He's on his second missionary journey, and normally he would only stay in a town for a few days or weeks. But Remember, Paul knows how to make tents too, so he starts working with them. And then Jesus actually tells Paul to stay there. So Paul stays in Corinth for one and a half years, working with Priscilla and Aquila, making tents, but also telling everybody he can about who Jesus is. Eventually, if you keep reading Acts 18, you see that Paul leaves Corinth after a year and a half. He goes to Ephesus, but he takes Priscilla and Aquila with him. And then he actually leaves them in Ephesus and he keeps traveling. And they become leaders there, training people and discipling them. And then we see at the end of Romans that they end up back in Rome. And Paul actually says in Romans 16 that all the Gentile churches are grateful for the leadership of Priscilla and Aquila. So we see here how God uses something scary and painful for good. Churches in Corinth, Ephesus, and Rome all grow because this husband and wife gets kicked out of their home. Jesus can use painful and scary things 
to grow his good kingdom. Think about this past year. Has anything happened to you that was painful or scary? Maybe you have seen how Jesus used those painful, scary things to grow his good kingdom, or maybe you haven't seen him do anything good with those things yet. But either way, it's so important to remember and believe that Jesus can use painful and scary things to grow his good kingdom. Because cyborgs love science, this week we are heading to the final frontier, my backyard for a science experiment. Now, you guys can watch along at home and still do the prayer activity, but if you want to do the whole science experiment, you need your mom or dad's permission, and then you can go to this website for the full instructions. <laughs> your vegetables humans do we have to resistance is futile oh, she's so annoying Turn yeah I know. Off. okay beep yeah cyborg dad and brother are so much better beep cyborg dad <laughs> beep Cyborg Dad beep. beep. Cyborg Dad beep. Let's just reprogram it. Cyborg beep. Dad. Beep. Cyborg Dad. Cyborg Brother. Hi. Hi. Cyborg Brother, stop. Cyborg Dad. There he is. Yay. Hi, Cyborg Dad. Hey, Cyborg Dad. Can we do whatever we want, aka ice cream for the rest of our lives? Of course. You can do whatever you want. You can have ice cream every day and cake for the rest of your life. Thanks, Cyborg Dad!